All right, guys, how's it going? 2016 is going to be a major, major year for gaming and technology. We're at the beginning of virtual reality. We're going to see 10 core CPUs from Intel and a new architecture from AMD later on in the year. But for me, the biggest, the most interesting thing is the ongoing battle between AMD and Nvidia in graphics. Because graphics is really the most important thing for us gamers. Yesterday, AMD surprised us with the announcement of their new Polaris architecture designed for FinFets. This one was supposed to be called Arctic Islands. However, a few weeks ago, I had caught wind of a change in the name to Polaris and now it has been officially announced. So I'm going to be taking a quick look at the new architecture and a rather surprising semi-benchmark that's raising a few eyebrows. So let's get to it. Right, so what's this FinFet all about? Well, this graphic here represents what has been happening over the years. As transistors get smaller, you're able to pack more and more of them into ever smaller areas, yeah? So like back in 2005, we had 90 nanometer. Can't really think that far back. But if you go back to 2009, you can see the 40 nanometer chips there. That was stuff like your GTX 480, your GTX 580. On the AMD side, we had the AMD 5870, which is a very famous card. And a bit later on, still on 40 nanometers, we had the 6000 series from AMD, somewhat less famous and less good. The most recent and current generation of graphics cards are all still on 28 nanometers. If you have a look at the bottom, you can see which year the new technology process manufacturing began. And you can also see that the time between each new node is lengthening quite dramatically. So while there was only two years between say 55 nanometers and 40 nanometers, and two years between 40 nanometers and 28 nanometers, we are now really talking over four years between 28 nanometers and FinFets. So basically we have been stuck in this 28 nanometer generation. That's every graphics card from the NVIDIA 680 up until the current 980 Ti. And in AMD's case, we've had the 7000 series, which was say the 7970. And then they changed their name to the R9, R7, R5 series. But basically speaking, we haven't had a proper node transition and the subsequent improvement in graphics performance that that brings for over four years. 14 and 16 nanometer FinFets is going to be changing this finally. And this is what the FinFet GPU excitement is all about. Now, it's important to realize that FinFets are by far not an AMD only thing. And Nvidia will also be moving to FinFets not long after AMD. And it was in fact Intel back in 2012 who first mass produced FinFet CPU, which was the Ivy Bridge generation. So with that in mind, although AMD are talking a lot about FinFets, they went to great lengths to discuss how much that their architecture had improved as well. And you can see from this image that they have got a new command processor, a new geometry processor, and although the cores are still based on the graphics core next, they claim to be much more efficient and capable of higher clock speeds. There's new multimedia cores, there's a new display engine, there's a new level two cache and a new memory controller. So even though this is based on graphics core next, you can see that there are major changes compared to the last generation graphics core next. Taking a closer look at the key features, you can see that they have added a primitive discard accelerator. I'm not going to go into that too much now. I'll talk about that a bit more when I do a head to head between Pascal and Polaris. They've kept the hardware scheduler and there's also improved shader efficiency and memory compression. The next generation display engine is going to be HDMI 2.0 and DP 1.3. And the multimedia is quite interesting to me. As a YouTuber, native 4K H.265 at 60 FPS. These cards should be very good at recording, especially recording gameplay. We are, of course, expecting to see the same thing from NVIDIA in that regard, though. Down at the bottom, we can see that they are claiming a historic leap in performance per watt for Radeon GPUs. Right, it's important to say now that AMD has actual working graphics cards based on the new Polaris architecture. And Ryan Smith over at Anantech was one of the first people to see it in action. So a lot of people have been quite surprised by this. However, AMD has actually had working graphics chips since very early November last year. So they've actually had more than enough time to get them plugged into a PCB and get something resembling a graphics card up and running. And in this case, they have chosen to demonstrate a very small entry level card. According to Ryan Smith, it is likely smaller than 120 millimeter squared. 
which is very much in the entry level, low end graphics card market range here. Yeah? With that said, they have decided to pit it against the GTX 950, which is of course the Nvidia Maxwell card, which is based on the GTX 960 and is of course a 28 nanometer card. And this was the part that has raised some eyebrows. At the bottom right, you can see the comparison of the Polaris Architecture GPU against the competition. 1080p, medium settings, locked at 60 frames per second. The reason AMD has done this is to show how energy efficient the new architecture is. As we all know, Nvidia's Maxwell is an incredibly efficient architecture, but by the looks of things, it has been blown away by AMD's new Polaris architecture. Running at the same 60 frame per second cap, the Polaris system was only drawing 86 watts at the wall compared to 140 watts of the GTX 950. Now, otherwise, it was a completely identical system. The CPU running on both systems was an i7-4790K running at an 80% power limit. What AMD is trying to do here is sort of emulate a high-end laptop kind of performance. They both got 16GB of DDR3 RAM and an SSD drive. The benchmark run was Beggar's Canyon in Star Wars Battlefront, 1080p medium settings and like I said, VSync cap to 60Hz. And I can show you the test right now. First up is AMD's Polaris architecture and as you can see it's drawing about 86 watts at the wall. In the same scene, the GTX 950 is drawing over 150 watts consistently. Looking at both together, you can clearly see the difference between them both. And the final still image lays it all out. 86 watts for the new AMD card versus 153 watts for the GTX 950. That is a massive difference of 67 watts between the systems. And you'll notice that I said systems there, not the graphics cards themselves. So in order to get the true value of how much power the cards are drawing, we have to subtract the rest of the system components. And we also need to take the inefficiency of the power supply into consideration. So let's start off with that. AMD will be using a pretty good high-end power supply for this, yeah? So let's say it's only 10% inefficient. Just remove 10% from both of these numbers. That leaves you with 77.4 watts for the AMD system and 137.7 watts for the Nvidia system. Now, we know that it's using a pretty powerful i5, 16 gigabyte DDR3, solid state drive. Overall, that's probably gonna cost about 40 watts while gaming. Some games it'll be more, some games it'll be less. The i5 of course is an 84 watt CPU. However, not all cores are gonna be loaded on the CPU while gaming. The rest of the system power draw is pretty negligible. However, given what we know about the GTX 950, the card is easily capable of drawing 100 watts plus while gaming. So let's just go with that round 100 watt number overall. So if you just go with that 100 watt number, that leaves you with a tiny 40 watts left for the new AMD Polaris graphics card. Looking at that together though, 40 watts versus 100 watts, that is 2.5 times more efficient. In AMD's own test, remember, because that is very important. But still, it should be pretty clear to see that there is a massive advance in performance per watt at the low end. It's really difficult to know what the ultimate performance of this part could actually be. However, if you again look at the system breakdown, you can see that the engineering sample Polaris chip is running at 850 megahertz, which is very much in the realms of a laptop speed graphics card. And this is probably where we're going to see the chip first of all. That said, we can reasonably expect it to go above 1.2 gigahertz on the desktop while still remaining under 75 watts, which is pretty important because it means it won't need a power supply connector and will therefore be very interesting to OEMs and system builders who are trying to get the maximum performance for as little power as possible. We could be looking at greater than GTX 960 performance at less than half the power. But again, it's not easy to tell given the limited data that we have right now. According to this slide, planned availability is mid-2016. Mid-2016 covers quite a lot though and can in fact be any time between April and September. Another website, PC Perspective, has claimed that it will be available within two months. By my reckoning, we're likely going to see it in Apple machines first of all, with the desktop versions coming around May or June. As far as the high end goes, we can expect to see that another three months later. So this is the very first look at the very first 14 nanometer FinFET graphics card that will be available to the market. The goal was console caliber performance in a thin and light notebook and AMD has almost certainly achieved that goal. Nvidia surely won't be that far behind. 
and it will be very interesting to see how this develops over the coming months. Catch you later guys.